Greetings, hope this video finds you well today. In this video, I'm spending 20 minutes with the Mercedes AMG GT3 in race room at Zolder. I picked Zolder because that is the first long pain race of the 2018 season, so I thought it'd be fitting to do it there. This car is part of a three car addition to race room in the GT3 category. So you've got the Mercedes Benz AMG GT3, the new Audi R8, and the Callaway C7 Corvette. All excellent cars. This came with a much larger update, adding triple screen support and 64 bit as well. For more details, you can actually hit up ISR TV. Uh, that's inside sim racing with John Sable. He goes over the whole entire thing, does a great job of covering all that. Me, however, I am focused on the driving and I am focused on the AMG GT3. Now, before I get on to the driving, just let me say thank you for your support. I've received a bunch of welcoming and nice messages. I've also just crossed over the 500 subscriber mark, which for me is fantastic. And quite honestly, I don't know where this is going to go, but I'd rather have a smaller pool of subscribers and people that watch my video and enjoy that. And we can engage in a discussion that is both critical and helpful and respectable and be respective and be respectful of one another uh, that's the kind of community I want to foster so if that gets me smaller numbers because I'm you know not always ranting and raving at everything uh, so be it I want to point out things that I enjoy so thank you so much and if you'd like to support my channel the biggest way is well you're already doing it watching my videos and then sharing them that's how we're gonna get this out and just grow as a channel and that'd be great so without any further ado the AMG GT3 in race room. Okay, rolling start, qualified 13th. Waiting till we hit the line, now we can go. AI is at 110%. Tires are gonna be a little cold to begin with here. I like rolling starts better, it doesn't allow you to usually get the gains on a standing start that is typical with AI not always but it is typical oh I left the door open because I thought I was going to be able to go around the Audi so I did buy all three new GT cars whoa 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 So anyway, I bought all three of the new GT cars, and the Mercedes is by far my favorite. The Callaway Corvette, the C7, and the new R8, I ran roughly the same lap times, but I was considerably more quicker with this Mercedes. I uh, just felt more comfortable, and I'm typically more comfortable in a front-engine car as opposed to a mid-engine or even a rear uh, it just suits my driving style more and I have to say these but all three cars felt awesome oh I got a little I don't know if that was a bump or the curb but yeah all three cars feel fantastic miss my apex a little this car just, I feel a little bit more connected with this, and there's no changes to this car. This is right out of the box. I think the, uh, we're running... I did change the traction control level, though. I changed it to 15 instead of 20 on step one, and that's what I'm running. Hopefully I can get in the rhythm here and start making some good laps, because it's going to be hard to go forward. I also tried out the other cars. They said they updated the other GT3 cars. That was a little harder for me to tell. Like, I can tell there's a significant difference between the new GT cars, even versus, like, the older or the past GT cars, like the, well, for instance, the Bentley that's just up ahead of us. A lot of the cars have where it understeers. 
and uh, I I don't know I'm sure you can dial that out not my favorite way to drive a car but I tell you the one that surprised me was the the older Ford GT that one is surprisingly good this is not a good idea through the corners it seems to lack a little straight line speed but it is awesome through the turns kind of getting held up here I feel like yep we're running significantly slower try to just not shift into fourth there Playing in the dirt. There is no um, pedal reference that you would be able to see. I am using an ultra wide monitor, that's why things look cut off in my videos. Gotta concentrate here. So I thought I'd show off the pedal, a pedal cam, see if that does anything. Somebody asked about using, you know, an extra camera. It's extra work. It does kind of delay putting a, a video together, get it to line up, because I don't use a webcam that records everything together. I want the quality of my camera, and I don't want it to take away resources from my system. So this is the best alternative, just takes longer, but I figured this was a good opportunity. Oh. Good opportunity to show off not only the pedal cam, but my new pedals as well. Before I was using the Fanatic CSR Elites, now I'm with the Black Friday sale that they had. I am upgraded to the Fanatic uh, what are these? Club Sport V3 inverted pedals. I just like the inverted. Gotta get through there good. Need to go forward. And I am toying with the idea of doing a review. I know that there have been other people that have done reviews about these pedals. Uh, I can tell you that it does make, it has made a significant difference in my lap times. The best I could do was a 132, I think it was 7. In four laps with these pedals, I ended up doing a 1, get this guy under braking, a 131.9, and I've since then done as fast as a 131.2. And it's just the control that I get out of the pedals. I did remove the damp, uh, the damper, the dampener, and put in the performance brake. Those little, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, those old, I think they call them springs, but they're little plastic cylinders that have, you know, a, a different, um, I'm going to, this is the wrong term, but I'm going to say hardness to them. One's stiffer than the other, and the length also determines that. So I put in a red 13 and a green 13, which is a medium. And holy cow, I just could not believe the difference in the braking that it makes. And brake is the probably the biggest thing. And not only sim racing, but just racing in general. I know whenever I would get in a car in the real world for racing, the brakes... always kind of mess with you if they don't feel quite right. So we're, we're testing out all kinds of new stuff here. Race room also in this update with the GT cars. Uh, true triple screen support and 64-bit as well. Uh, John over at Inside Sim Racing did a nice comprehensive look at all those features. Whoa, too much throttle. Damn it. 
felt like I was making headway and still sitting in tenth. That was a 32.8. That's oh god, it's slow. Talking and driving always slows me down, but I I like to think that it doesn't. But it usually does. I'm like, I can talk and drive the same speed. What's the difference? Difference is trying to think about something to say. Okay, we're up there. I do notice myself kind of short shifting this car. Because I'm not exactly prepared for the RPMs that it can turn. But again, just the way this car bites through the corner, the way it performs under braking, and again, I did not make any changes to this car, so it inspires quite a bit of confidence. Oh, am I gonna get in? Am I gonna get in? Ah! Let's try not to push him off the track. Oh, a little blocky. Blocky, blocky. I'm gonna get him under braking. There we go. I did turn down the force feedback because I am using a Thrustmaster TSPC racer. And so I did turn down the force feedback. It was pretty heavy for me, down to 1.5. I'm more interested in the fidelity that happens rather than the uh, outright brutal strength that a wheel can provide. We're almost at the halfway mark. We've only passed a few cars. But that's also in part of tuning the AI to your difficulty, you know, your level, and getting a good race out of the AI. It's no, I don't find it any fun just to walk away from the field. Like, part of this is, I think you can really, depending on the, the sim you're using, really use it to train how you drive and you can say well there's nothing that replaces a real driver and I understand that but at the same point I think there are things that the AI can provide you with learning how to adjust your line because usually that's the biggest thing that people don't realize is when you get around other cars you're constantly having to adjust your line and still try to maintain that speed and then not get sucked into the rhythm of the car in front of you that's very easy as well those things AI can teach you the finer details about how you know a real person drives versus AI that's where you know getting on a server and having a good race with the AI I've really got to quit doing that I'm just killing myself getting to the throttle too soon And then that, and shoving the front end, missing the apex. Brilliant. You know, I never used to be a fan of Zolder. I always thought it was a little too simplistic. You kind of look at the layout and you're like, well, that's not anything special. But over time, I actually have really come to enjoy what Zolder brings to the table. It's not so much the technicality of the course, it's the racing aspect that the course brings, which I appreciate. Wow, he really slowed down through there, didn't, didn't he? Or I'll, I gained a lot of time, one of the two. There we go, that was better. Had to do some safety lifts through there. I didn't think that was going to work. I was content just following him. Alright. Get him under braking. That is something that these pedals really, I don't know, really make me feel like it allows me to do is really modulate the pedal well under hard braking. Got about seven and a half minutes left. And it's a combination of things. I don't think I'd be able to do that if the if the car wasn't so intuitive either. 
I mean, you can have the best equipment in the world. It's not going to make crappy uh, physics any better. Which, thankfully, Race Room does not have. We need a little bit better lap time out of me. That was better. Got a, another Corvette in front of us. It's real critical not to give it too much throttle through that little chicane there. It will really impact your ability to get out of that second part of it good and into the next turn. Yeah, just the racing aspect that Zolder provides is really cool. I don't think I'm far enough. I think we're just going to take it easy through here, follow him through as he goes slower than I anticipated. Might be close enough to get him going into turn one here. He's going to move over a little bit. 3202, that's better. I have to give him, I knew it. Whoa! Well, he sailed it in there good. And then, of course, I'm not paying attention. Missed my apex. Or I shut off too early. These cars do not like to be driven in really hard. They do like, they seem to at least, like you to back off a little earlier and roll the corner and then go ahead and accelerate early. That's what seems to gain me the most time. I notice even if I try to dive into the corner just a little harder, it really, the car really doesn't like it. It really likes it when you accelerate early rather than trying to late brake. Waited a little too long to get on the throttle there. We got four and a half minutes left. I wonder if we can squeak a top five out of this. Again, all three cars that they've released. I mean, it's really a good job that Race Room's done with this update. So I don't think you can go wrong with either any of them, really, if you're curious in getting the newer cars. Like I said, the, the older cars don't seem to be quite, quite as strong. I think I'd like them a bit more competitive, but maybe that's just my driving style. I can't definitively say that they're actually worse. But out of the box, I wasn't making any changes, just trying to drive them, you know, the way they're coming in the in the base setup. I definitely preferred the AMG over everything else. We got an M6 up there, it looks like. Thank you. A little bit of a dive bomb. Probably not something you should do to a human player. That's okay. There was no contact. All right, just under three minutes. Force feedback feels great in this car, in all the cars, really. Race room just seems to have really, over time, excelled in that department. AI is working well, in my opinion. Really one, again, I know, you sound like a flip-flopper, Billy. No, it's just uh, there are certain sims that 
I don't mind saying I have more than one that I really enjoy, and Race Room is one of them. It just... The handling model makes sense to me, and that's my biggest thing. You know, we all have def different definitions of, of what makes up a true sim, and the biggest one for me is just the handling model. I, you know, the the way the physics work and the way the tire, the tires work, is a big, big thing. And this just, I feel like I'm driving a car. That's my biggest thing. I feel like I can push. And if I step over, I still have a way to recover. You know, there's a certain limit. You obviously don't want to make it easy, easy. Oh, is this going to be a disaster? Yep. I tried to force the issue. That was not the smartest move. I should have just followed him through and gotten him in turn one. This is probably going to be our last lap. Shut off a little early and make him go wide. BMW still at the right door. He pushes on me just a little bit. Crossover? Not close enough. Through this long sweeper. I can usually gain a little time here if I do it right. A little bit, not much, just a little under braking. I don't think we're close enough to get him. I don't think I'm gonna try this. I'm not close enough. This could end in disaster. So we're just gonna follow him through maybe get him into this next chicane and the hard part is not to get fixated on the cart because you can make a mistake he's still there nope I think we cleared him yep this will be our last lap we've made it all the way in the top five So we started out kind of slow, but it picked up the pace at the end. Woo. Again, just the way the car just makes that turn, even when I feel like I've overdone it. Yep, checkered flag. All right, well, we did finish fifth. Oh, I think I had a faster lap than the leader. I think I was a 132.0 is what I did really really appreciate sector three and race rooms efforts to make these cars this is probably in my opinion i know people are going to disagree but i think in in my opinion these are probably these three gt cars the mercedes the c7 and the new r8 are probably the three best gt cars in terms of feeling wise that i've driven all year i really really like the way the cars drive around here so if you happen to have race room uh, you can test drive these cars before you buy them just overall great job sector three i just i cannot say i cannot sing the praises enough about this car 20 minutes with the mercedes amg gt3 car in race room at zolder again you can follow me on twitter and instagram at strange underscore billy I've been strange. You guys have been great. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I will catch you in the next video.